Hey everyone, Shark here. Got another 1v1 for you today. Uh, again, on Toronto Coastline, not by design. That's just kind of how it worked out. Got, a, uh, again, a request for DAC versus Brits, and I wanted to find a game at the high level that didn't involve Bersaglieri, so that's what we got. Uh, and so this one between Barrow Downs, you remember him from last week, uh, now the number seven ranked DAC player coming out of China, uh, up against Shin Shigumi from Japan, who's ranked number 37 with the Brits. Um, and that's really it. Uh, casting this one with me is rather splendid Cromwell. Lots of discussion during the game. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so I'm here with uh, the rather splendid Cromwell. And as requested, we're taking a look at Dak versus Brits again. So this time, uh, it took me a little bit of digging. I was able to find a match where they do not choose Bersalieri right off the rip. So uh, I asked my buddy Cromwell to hop in here with me. He's a, he's a Brit main. Uh, and so we'll kind of look at the techniques here of both players and, and see what we get. Um, for It looks like for Shinshigumi here in blue, he's gone Aussies, right? And he's gotten his first squad of kangaroos out right away. Um, and you know what? Let's just go straight to you for that. What do you think about that as a counter to Dak? Uh, it's funny. I actually always prefer Aussies against against Ver. Uh, for Dak, I actually prefer pumping out uh, sections and making sure I get that uh, rifle, the anti-tank rifle. Well, I like what the Shishumi's done here. He's, I don't even see on his big muni point, he's wired off everything. He's mm -hmm. obviously quite worried about it. He's wired off the entrance as well as the heavy cover. And I respect that. Yeah, I. you can argue whether or not it's necessary, uh, yeah. but, you know, your sappers are capping anyway, so it's a good use of the time. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. And uh, these guys are, you know, giving bullets to the void here, the sappers, mm. at range with the the stens. Yeah, he's just holding the fort. I get that. I'm trying to hold that big fuel for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, about the Aussies, I think the Aussies are more... Um, I think it's not so much against Dak, but I think it's more for the map. I think he's just using it for the capping potential at the start of the game. I well, think that's why he's going for it. And, and they'll scale better against Pigrens. But we mm. know because we just casted a Barrow Down stack game about a week ago, and he's doing the exact same build here at the start, right? Uh, Krod shoots in Panzer Grenadier and then a 250. Uh, fun fact these Panzer Pioneers, they didn't drop any model, and now they're going to slowly heal while they're inside the 250. So pretty nifty there. Sappers cool. wisely retreat before they get gunned down. Um, but yeah, lots of captain power. And Barrow Downs likes to play very mechanized, which really plays into the strengths of the DAC as a faction. Um, we're going to see a second Panzer Grenadier from him. Uh, oh. but I, I think, though, like the Aussies, they scale well with veterans, just like the Pegrins do. So if yeah. you're worried about infantry combat, I can see the value in that approach. I also really like the two pounders as a counter to a lot of the DAC light vehicles with the higher fire rate, the wider arc, etc. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm. Yeah, I need to start using the two pounders more. I've, I've never really utilized them since they, they came into play, but. They're pen, I know, it's, not, it's surprisingly good. Mm -hmm. uh, cheeky play with the crotches and to decap uh, the medium fuel there. Oh man, Sappers almost get the mind out. Really yeah, aggressive mind course. placement before the 250 yeah. catches him. Yeah, it's a bit a bit too much. He's putting a lot of pressure on with this uh, this 250 with the squad inside. He's really going to struggle to stop this. He's yeah. Aussies. Yeah. Uh, Shin Shigumi Ooh. is smartly. Oh wow, the crowd shoots it. Oh, he gets it. Nice, nice. pickup. And then the Aussies retreat immediately. He's got a field infirmary going up in his headquarters. So, you know, he's leaning on that healing to help uh, prevent some of the manpower bleed. Yeah, I think he's solely, at this point, he's solely reliant on mines to try and take out this 250. He's gotten, like, I think he's got one or two down, but I don't think it's enough. Yeah. It, so, I think the approach here is get a number of these kangaroo sections out to try to gain some map control. But yeah. against the mechanized approach from the DAC, it's, it's honestly not working. And now, this... Clown car just running down all these retreating units is something that we talk about a lot on this map. There's a lot of risk in reaching for these high resource points. The retreat paths are so long. Yeah. Here come the kangaroos. Uh, the sapper's going to get away. Mm -hmm. Now, here in the center, uh, yeah. Barrow Downs is finding the mines. 
mean, he, obviously he's seen the sappers place them earlier, and he's just trying to uh, he's trying to disable them now and trying to make it work in his benefit. He doesn't want his 250 hitting it on a chase down. Yeah, and, and smartly he got a second Panzer Pioneer out to get that mm -hmm. minesweeper since the first one has a flamethrower on it. Clever girl. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense, and the Panzer Pioneers uh, are not a bad early game infantry unit as well. I mean, they're not Panzer Grenadiers, but they are still pretty high DPS for an engineer unit. Uh, yeah. So he's not losing a ton of overall combat power with that approach. Obviously, I'm totally trashed compared to uh, Shinsumi, but uh, I'm surprised he didn't get just one section with anti-tank rifles. But I guess maybe he's not worried about it. Uh, uh, or maybe the Humber's coming. He already has his platoon command post built. Yeah. Does he? I thought he did. Maybe he canceled it. Never mind. Ignore me. Now, here you oh, go. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. He's got an infantry yeah, yeah. section on the way, so he's listening. Ah, uh, cool, cool. <laughs> nice to see it. Yeah. <laughs> nice uh, to someone, it's nice to know someone listens to <laughs> These sappers, oh. And again, another long retreat path. Yeah, and to your point, like, it might be worth him laying a couple mines down on these retreat paths as he comes out yeah. to cap next time to try to punish one of these overextensions. Yeah, he's done it a few times. You can tell by all the flame flame patterns all over this road. <laughs> that he's, he's I, I thought that was just busy. Italian engineering. <laughs> oh. oh, it's really, really low. Almost oh, loses that? the 2-5-0 to the Vickers. Maybe one of these kangaroo squads can catch on our tree. And you see Shin Shigumi actually rotating over. This is the advantage of the attack map. If you're look at, He's converging all three yeah. of the squads while they're going to try to uh, retreat. Yeah, and repair. Um, meanwhile, well, you got this tank rifle package. Packet that just popped on this on the section. Nice. Well, this two five zero has been cornered. Uh, maybe they can kill it in time. This Panzer Grenadier squad in this building is going to be hard to displace, though. Yeah. It's not going to be ideal for him. Yeah, and we see the flak for lane coming out as well as now uh, an assault Grenadier squad in a half track. I feel like mines. You you got to get some mines out because. Yeah. Barrow Downs is going to continue to leverage these, like, light vehicles. <clears throat> yeah, and then this the suppression from the flak filling, right? It's AoE suppression, so even though they're in green cover, they do get suppressed. 2-5-0 is fully healed, so it's going to uh, do just fine against the kangaroos. The boys' rifles trying to close the distance, but they're just going to bleed to the panzer grenadiers. And... Shin Shigumi's large ambush uh, or conversions does not work. Now these Panzer Grens might Ooh, go down. So low. Just a oh, sliver of health. Oh, there we go. Aussies on their retreat path and they pick up the Panzer Grenadier squad. Now this this two man Aussie squad also in danger. They yeah he soft retreats them briefly before he hits the retreat button to to fix the uh, retreat, path. retreat yeah. path. Yep. That's sick. And now he's going, he's finally getting his platoon command post out. He's unlocked the supply run. Oh, I, I actually love, I like the supply run. I'm a, I'm a bit of a supply run user myself. I, I can see it being kind of nice on this map with the uh, the way the fuel works at the top. If you're happy with that, just go for the, the corner one, you know, in the top right. Mm -hmm. Oh my Try goodness. Try get a, a nice big fuel supply. Oh, come on, section. Oh, they take a, fortunately take a turn around that house. Yeah. So it looks like both sides will kind of back up and, uh, Lick their wounds. Oh man, this Aussie section here, they just gotta get out. Nah, this it's is... too late, I think. Oh, look at this 250 is a oh. hero. It just keeps surviving, man. It oh. just keeps surviving. Almost might have been better if they had just stayed they, and killed yeah. the 250. Two pounder yeah, on the they, field now. They literally needed just one more pen. Yeah. Uh, that's all they needed. I, I would have, I don't know, would I sacrifice it? If I thought I could get away, I wouldn't. If I thought on, I could get away, I wouldn't. On any other map, it's probably worth doing the retreat, but on this map with the wonky retreat paths, if you think yeah. you're gonna lose this squad, for sure, two pounds. I didn't realize. Go ahead. I just didn't realize you've got a you got an assault squad in the 250, Colin. You know the assault mm -hmm. grants. Yeah, the assault like, mechanized. I can't, I can't remember what they're called. It's nice to see. You. I think it'll be good against the. Oh, it'll be good against the Aussies for a bit, and then it won't be good against the Aussies. <laughs> you know, once they scale up. But it also might help with. Uh, if he's worried about AT guns, right? You know the two pounders are available. You can drive up to him and then use the sprint to decrew yeah. the weapon quickly. Oh, these sappers are gonna oh, I know. bleed like crazy. Oh, uh, a mine does strike the two five zero. I don't know if he has the combat half tracks upgrade, but he does. 
Maybe the veterancy, a little bit of uh, damage resistance. Mm. Seeing ya. Oh, all right. So the boys AT section back on the field, challenging the flak for Lang. And Aussies, I like this push under the plus 16 munitions here. Barrow Downs already teching tier four. All right, here come the uh, assault grenadiers. Two pounder, it's a nice hit off on the 250. So it'll back up, but the Aussies force a retreat as well. Yeah. I think uh, he's going to need to keep the 250s alive so he can keep doing that, keep the uh, assault grenades relevant until they get veterancy. Because a normal engagement's like the ones we're seeing now, they're just going to stall. That's all they're good for is stalling. Yeah. You see, these Aussies at range just not doing much damage to Salt Grenadiers. Fortunately, not taking been, a lot of damage in, in return. Yeah, I, I've noticed that he's been... I think he has the munis. He's just been, like, not wanting to upgrade his Aussies with the scoped rifles for whatever reason. I'm sure he has his reasons. Uh, I, I, I don't know the exact stats, but he's yeah. curious that we haven't seen that yet. I, yeah, I wonder what he's saving it for. He doesn't have any abilities that require munitions yet. Our, our glorious Malinois co-caster is back. <laughs> She's he's really giving it to someone outside the window. These sappers, oh no, they gotta go. They gotta go. Yeah. He doesn't see it. He's he's getting a re recce section on his new section. Oh. I don't know. I'm not sure what the purpose is. The two-pounder gets one shot off. The kangaroos here could knock out this 250. The question is, will Come he get on. the sapper? Uh, oh, nice. Oh, it's terrible retreat path. Yeah. Uh, but these he's gonna get away. Yeah, they're gonna get away. There's nothing further down on the retreat path. The Aussie's coming out of the headquarters, not in position, unfortunately. And but Barrowtown's already uh, with his tier four out. He has yet to choose a battle group, and he's got 76 fuel. So we could see a P3 on the field here immediately. Mm. Yeah, I don't think double fuel don't... controls. Yeah. Killing Shin Shigumi. I don't think Shin's going to be prepared for a P3. I think this, like, this super mechanized approach, I just don't think Aussies is fitting very well into it. Mm -hmm. I, I, he's starting to adapt his build, but he's like super infantry heavy now. So he's probably going to be bleeding a lot of manpower if he takes some bad bad engagements. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of paranoid for him. I feel like he needs another two pounder or a six pounder out. He's got enough yeah. fuel now somehow. Uh, there we go. We're going to see the company command post. So his tier four as well. Meanwhile, Barrow Downs uh, has selected the Italian infantry battle group and unlocked Glossatori and thrown them on the field. Mm. So interesting, like fighting infantry with infantry. I know the Glossatori are pretty chonky. Uh, yeah. But in a rock, paper, scissors style environment, <laughs> um, <laughs> fighting rock with rock, not always uh, the best approach. But we'll. Yeah. I think the snipe ability and the. Um... Oh, it's going to be how he deals with the uh, the gustatory things because they're so. I know they're chunky, but that'll be a way you can you, you can snipe a model and then just will the rest out with the. Uh, and they get debuffed, back. right? So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, these sappers at risk again. Two five zero. Oh. They'll get away in time. Now, no flax hit. Where'd the flak hit? Oh, it took a uh, hit in the back uh, there. Uh, yeah, he used a flare from the recce section. Oh, uh, here comes the already on this point. These Aussies, if they don't move. Oh, no. He hasn't used the mark ability. I don't know why. Yeah. He's just gonna just... Guastatori start to bleed. They throw the smoke. Nice play there. This place. Assault Grenadier grenades oh. come in. Oh, my goodness. What is... That's a lot of bleed. That's... Oh, it was going well for him. Now these Aussies... They had to close with the Glossatory, and now we're going to lose one Aussie squad there. Oh, God. I can't watch. Oh, no. Infantry oh, section. No. Aussie squad. Oh. oh. This is what I was really, really afraid of. This, this two pounder's dead as well. I, I, how does he get out of this? Uh, I don't think he does. <laughs> I, man. I. The only, the only answer is Barrow Dez has to make a bunch of mistakes. He's got to, like, get a Matilda on the field and whittle away. Look at the health on these... these Guasa and Assault Grenadier yeah. squads. This is insane. Yep. Oh, he's, he's used the, uh... 
the ambulance to recruit the two pounders to deal it real quick while uh, reinforcing uh, his other units. Yeah. Oh, grenade on the sappers. Oh, oh, oh and then they use the veterancy Patrick. ability. The sappers are going to get away, but just barely. Just, yeah. Oh, and now Barrow Down's going for the armored reserves. So it looks like he, he sees the advantage that he has right now, and he's just investing for the late game. Yeah, I mean, look at the difference between the army sizes. 19 to 56. It's pretty, it, pretty comprehensive. Losing three squads in a single engagement would swing any yeah. game. I, I think it's interesting. So the previous game we casted... Uh, with the Bersalieri, the entire strategy revolved around VP pressure. Mm -hmm. But in this game, you see this about a more traditional co-game focusing on resources. Oh no, this boy section. Oh, it's oh really... good lord. It's a massacre. Yep. Yep. I don't, I don't know what he was wanting to do. I don't know what he was trying to achieve hopping on the wrong side of green cover there. For I, I don't understand why. I think he just wanted to shoot the flag one more time with the anti-tank rifle yeah just a moral victory yeah and and correct me if i'm wrong i don't even think shinshigami has the infantry training unlocked Let's see. that bonus would have been really helpful i know he's short on fuel uh, guastatori in a 250 i don't, yeah, you don't see this too often yeah the, Gu the guasta got 10 kills in its first engagement that was how how much damage it did with that, uh, in that with the 25% damage reduction that they they got in the last patch with the change of the armor mechanics, mm -hmm. I feel like they're just so like it feels like they don't drop models. You yeah. saw them; they were down to the three models and a sliver of health, and it didn't matter. Yeah, I think if he applied the uh, Australian debuff to him, it would it made it made a huge difference. I don't know why he he was determined not to do that. I've yeah. seen him use it all game actually. Now that you think about it. Is he, he used his munitions on boys AT upgrades in that recce package. Yeah, yeah, yeah I suppose. Not using the, the marksman snipe. Oh, this crusader has a lot of work to do to hit the fields. <laughs> it's um, well, he's getting get over repaired. Immediately, right? And now yeah. resource cash going down. He's going for um, strength and economy. I I think uh, I'm actually a big fan of the the flares. I'd love to use the flares in an interesting way. I haven't figured out how to do it yet, mm -hmm. but I'd like to place them on the enemy side of green cover for like the, the green cover you expect them to fight in yeah. for like big battles. Try to get some nice big artillery hits. In, in my experience, the shell arrives pretty slow though. Yeah, well, that's the thing because they're going into green cover, uh, because there's so much happening. There's a chance they might not dodge. They just stay in the green cover and then they mm. get hit by the shell. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just haven't figured it out yet. I think the Guastas have placed a big mine. I'm not sure yet, but I well, think they have. They're standing on it, which terrifies me. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's a Teller mine, possibly. I can't see. I just, While they stand on it, I can't see, unfortunately. I know. I'm just ma I'm manically clicking. <laughs> to no avail. He's building up these uh, resource caches. Uh, Shoe like... mine 42, general purpose. So oh, not a, not a big mine. Sad. Sorry. Tragic. Yeah. Now the crusader going hunting back here, doing a little bit of a base inspection. Not a terrible idea. If you can catch some of these units while they're retreating, you might be able to harass and buy yourself some time. The AT sure. gun's out of position. He's got to be careful of the snares here. And then a nice little cheeky mine here from the sappers. So Shinshigumi not out of this yet. You know, we could see a tiger here imminently. Yeah. AT guns come around the side. Does yeah. he see it? Uh, he's about to. Thump, thump. Yeah, he needs to get out of there. And there's the tiger. Oh. Run. Oh. Run, Goodness little gracious. crusader. He got out of there because of the over repair. Yeah. There's a modified uh, AT mine right outside the space. Hopefully this tiger hits it, slows it down. It looks like it's heading straight for it. Yeah. And he's using the infantry section to bait the tiger into it. Yep. I like this. All right, back off. Oh, uh, he just retreats instead. Honestly, pretty smart. The tiger, especially with the changes to his main gun damage profile, does a ton of damage. Meanwhile, yeah. sappers get cornered trying to grab that fuel. No. Oh, my goodness. 
And then the Speed flamers cache, gonna make a quick work of the resource caches, even with the yeah. strengthened economy. Second Crusader on the way. Oh, Tiger does hit it. Hey, it's not a big mine, but it'll do, baby. Oh, what's, un what's unfortunate is they can't really do anything about it at the moment. Yeah, just slow them down a little bit. Smoke from the assault grenades and the Crusader attack grounding through the smoke. Still can't, <laughs> still can't get a model. Come on, Crusader, I believe in oh, you. Oh, goodness. Now two oh of them. <laughs> Can't hit anything. <laughs> God, oh, they're just blasting the hedge. <laughs> oh, this is what happens when you bring in a reserve division uh, to fight against crack <laughs> troops <laughs> led by Erwin Rommel. <laughs> Guys, you have to look through the sights. All right. I thought you were gonna say that this is what you have. This is what happens when you let the British design tanks. Oh, uh, it's tragedy. Oh, Pro Crusaders. Uh, armored vehicle training coming out for Shinjigumi, so he knows he's got to get a lot of value out of these Crusaders. He might be holding off for the Archer, and I actually don't hate that approach. Crusaders yeah. to manage the infantry, leave him with the two-pounder on him, and then yeah. get an Archer, have, have them screen for the Archer. Here comes the Tiger, fully healed, engine damage repaired, uh. immediately drops an infantry section model, and they're going to retreat. Guastatori finally start to take some damage from the Crusaders. Yep. Lost two models there, that's something. Yeah, now one thing I've noticed, uh, Barrowdowns does this really well. He focuses most of his combat power in between the two far VPs. And I think this is really smart, because it allows him to flex. Now he's got the triple cap on, but he, he understands if he controls this section of the map, he can contest the enemy's fuel, and maintain a VP advantage. The only mm -hmm. risk is potentially getting flanked and having bad retreat paths. But when you're mechanized and your opponent is not, that risk is significantly reduced. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know why I think he was going so heavy on the Aussies at the start. I think he was expecting to be against Bursas because it's so popular at the moment. Mm. And I think he was wanting to dominate with the Aussies. But instead, he went super mechanized, and and he got played instead. I think that's I think that's where he went wrong. And, Ooh, and that another mine? that's really good analysis. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, the Crusader hit the mine as the Panzer Panthers were standing on it. Oh. We may finally get our first wipe for the Brits. Come on, Crusader! Oh, second, I believe in I you. Guess. Come, Come on, on, finish that shot, bud. Come on, buddy. For Bobbington. Oh my God, he can't do it. And now, yes! there we go. All right. <laughs> Tiger oh, on the lost. flank. Oh, <laughs> and this is that operational mobility that we were talking about. This whole mess of units here in the middle now collapsing down on the retreat path of these two Crusaders. And there is nothing here. There's a single six pounder. Oh, he's uh, taking out the base. It's smart, but Barrow Downs can just call in every seven minutes. He can call in another tank. Yeah. Oh, well, this six pounder is as good as dead with the Glossatory closing. Meanwhile, the Tiger using the mobile repair bug uh oh, pursuing the crusaders <laughs> not a fan <laughs> <laughs> I, all right well so the crusaders are going to get away and actually the six pounder gets away just having lost a ton of health glossatory just dodging bullets left and right here yeah shinshigumi is still at least one command point away from the archer I, I noticed both Crusaders are vet one. Did he buy? Yeah, he bought. Yeah, he did. The, uh, he did. Yeah, he bought the vet. So yeah, see. The problem now is going to be VPs. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a, there's actually a bug where if you um, buy the veteran seat, and then you, and then you upgun them, they get an additional, they get bonus veteran seat after you upgun them, like an additional amount of veteran seat for like no reason. Huh. But I think in this case he wants to keep the two pound gun on them to deal with the infantry. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. Here comes the oh, ABJ on the six pounder, and it's going to time perfectly with the infantry section. Oh. And there it goes. Oh my goodness. Oh. Tragedy. <laughs> Shin Shigumi, oh. full of luck. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, oh. I think he was really slow um, getting reacting to the ABJ call in, uh, to be fair there. <laughs> like, the six pounder, I think, barely packed up before. Uh, 
but yeah, I think I think that game was over for a while. Ever since he lost all of his Aussies in the middle, <laughs> uh, he lost like four squads there. I was yeah. thinking like, oh, is this going to be the greatest comeback of all time? But no, it's not. It was just uh, it wasn't. No. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Okay, so starting with Barrow Downs as the DAC player, um, we're going to talk about how he executed in a little bit. But as far as build order, right? Um, Panzer Pioneers, Crowd Shoots, and Panzer Grenadiers, two fifty half track. This allows for a lot of flexibility and mobility. Uh, at least initially, and then allows him to kind of adjust as he sees what the opponent's playstyle is. Ends up getting a second Panzer Grenadier squad, and then gets a second Panzer Pioneer, this time to equip a Minesweeper, because he sees some mines going down, and his first Panzer Pios have a Flamethrower. From there, he goes Tier 2, goes Fire Support Elements, gets a Flak Filling Out, uh, uses the Assault Mechanized Group to get Assault Grenadiers on the field. Makes a lot of sense, considering how infantry-heavy uh, Shin Shigami is playing, rather than Panzer Jaegers. Uh, gets his med truck, gets an AT gun because he is concerned about hard vehicles hitting the field. And then at this point, he sees he has a massive fuel advantage, so he techs into tier four uh, for the Panzer Army Command. Um, at this point, he selects the Italian Infantry Battle Group, so pretty late selection. Uh, a good reflection of how he's played so far, focusing on versatility and flexibility. Gets the Guasatori out, uses them to great effect, uh, as you saw. Then a little bit of additional tech Armored Reserves, Veteran, veteran Squad Leaders. Gets his Tiger 1 out, uh, and then he actually, uh, he gets emergency repair kits just in time before his Tier 4 is knocked out by that cheeky Crusader play, which actually eliminates the whole third row of vet or armory upgrades uh, from contention until he rebuilds that. Fortunately for him, he doesn't need it. He closes out the game with that devastating Obiche barrage at the end there to knock out the 6-pounder. Uh, looking at the battle group, obviously Guasatori, he goes for the registered artillery. Uh, to hit the VPs, uses that to kind of pinch the infantry into that major engagement on the north side of the map there in the middle of the game. Uh, goes through the field defenses, gets the uh, support uh, support weapon boost, and then the OPJ 305 millimeter barrage, which he uses to close out the game. All right, and now looking at Shin Shigumi's build. So uh, immediately selects the Australian Defense Battle Group, gets two Aussie Light Infantry out. It's a second Sapper Squad. Uh, and then a third Aussie Light Infantry, so very uh, anti-infantry heavy build at the start. Recognizing he's starting to take a lot of damage, gets a field infirmary first, and actually then builds his section command post. So this is kind of smart. He knows he doesn't need any of the units from the section command post immediately, so he doesn't build it until a little bit later to allow him to get units onto the field uh, more quickly. Uh, and then in theory, to gain a lot of that map control, the Aussie Light Infantry are good at anti-infantry combat and so especially if you're expecting to see lots of panzer grenadiers lots of bursilieri um, this is a pretty viable strategy for gaining early map control and inflicting that bleed onto your dac opponents uh, unfortunately that's not the way that barrow downs plays it um, but he's still very much in the game as he gets into the middle section of his tech so section command post gets an infantry section out which he throws the boys at rifles on kind of a soft at counter um, and they do if you catch a flak filling off guard, they can do a lot of damage, but Barrow Down's micro is too good for that to really be effective. So he ends up um, kind of looking for shots, looking for cheeky plays. Doesn't really get the value out of those boys' AT rifles that you'd want. Then he gets his platoon command post, uh, unlocks the two pounder call in and brings one onto the field. Um, I would have liked to see another one of these um, just so you get that, uh, that instant salvo, I think is really required to deal with some of these vehicles especially because the DAC can get the survivability upgrades that add HP to the vehicle. So you one shot can zone out an area, but can't really kill um, the vehicles by itself. Uh, gets a second infantry section. At this point, gets his company command post out. Even though he's taken some losses and even though he's behind on resources, he still manages to tech fairly well. Um, at this point, he has that, that very disastrous infantry engagement. Starts to rebuild with a couple of additional infantry sections. He's, he's moved off the Aussies at this point entirely. Uh, then he gets a couple of Crusader 2s out. Which, again, there's a route back into the game if he's able to get the Crusaders. Um, use them to kind of deal some manpower bleed to the DAC, who at this point are very specialized in anti-infantry play. Uh, and then get the Archer out. He goes for the Armored Vehicle Training, which makes a lot of sense, right? Just give him that extra combat bonus, that extra survivability. Um, and then at the end of the game, he's just doing whatever he can to try to hang on. So another six pounder um, and infantry section, but it doesn't really matter. The Tigers hit the field and Barrow Downs runs out the clock on him. Um, for the battle group, unlocks the Aussies, 
then goes for the two pounder. Uh, I feel like choosing the uh, supply run early was kind of a waste of a command point. Doesn't really get him where he needs to go. Um, I would have prioritized the two pounder and then the over repair since that provides it basically is a free AT gun shot on those Crusaders and actually comes in handy quite a bit later. Um, and then obviously working the left side of the tree, it gets the uh, strength and economy for the cheaper caches and extra health. Um, doesn't have enough CPs, I think, to choose at the end. Um, could have chosen the Creeping Barrage, but that uh, the way Barrow Downs is playing, that probably wouldn't have been super effective. So I think if this game goes longer, he goes for the Archer and uses that to kind of counter the heavier DAC vehicles. All right, so uh, we're back uh, with rather splendid Cromwell. And, uh, and you were making a point at the end of the match there about how looking back you thought Shinshigami's Aussie build was probably designed uh to help defeat the the Bersaglieri meta so uh, I was wondering if you could kind of walk through that a little bit um as a as a Brit main how you how you approach DAC like that yeah sure so um uh, when I'm playing DAC I always build rifles uh sorry rifle sections and I'm always thinking about building um AT mm -hmm. AT anti-tank sections on them uh, that's like that's like the standard, right? But mm -hmm. I think because the burst the burst of meta is so big right now, I think Shinsumi is just like assuming he's going to be against that, and he's designed a build against it using the uh, Australian light infantry to counter the the bursts, us, using them to cap up the map. And he's not thinking about things like dingoes anymore, and he's not thinking about things like anti tank rifles because he's not expecting a mechanized build, a traditional uh, DAC build. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly he's against that. He's against multiple two fifties. DAC flat track, you know, um, we got the Panzer Piles with the flamethrower inside the 250 causing mayhem. He suddenly becomes reliant on mines. He mm -hmm. tries to place some aggressive mines because that's his only defense now because he's, he has obviously his, his Australian she doesn't have snares and doesn't have any uh, access to light anti tank or any anti tank. And then when that doesn't work, he's just on the back route from that point on and he never manages to, to get back from that. Yeah. Uh, and it's easy to say. Like, oh, well, he has access to the two pounders and, and I like the two pounders in dealing with that. Right. So there's there's a version of this build that works. You get your three Aussies, you prioritize getting like maybe multiple two pounders out first. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and then either you catch these vehicles out of position or you basically just zone them out where they can't advance or support their infantry the way they want for risk of getting knocked out by the two pounder. Um, yeah. The doubt, the thing is, though, it's easy for us to see that because we have all the information because we're casting and we can see both sides. For sure. I, I actually saw the opposite of this in a different game where the Brit player overinvested into AT thinking I've got to be worried about the mechanized approach. Um, mm -hmm. And then the tanks never came. And so he's sitting on the field with a couple of six pounders in an AT rifle section and now he can't deal with the infantry problem that he's facing um, yeah, who are, are swarming him. Yeah. Yeah, because Panzergrenz are no joke, right? Uh, yeah. Dak Panzergrenz, they scale like they are if you're very, very scary. Yeah, yeah it's just finding that, finding that balance and trying to re read your opponent and try to figure out how, how heavy into mechanized they're going to go. And that can be really difficult because it can, can sometimes feel like you're always in the back foot because you're sort of like reacting to what they're doing, which mm -hmm. is sort of a, a bad feeling to be in. Yeah. Um, but what I liked about uh, Barrows was uh, after that big engagement where he he clearly had like the advantage where he got all those wipes. Mm -hmm. The way he started to move his force was like this giant mechanized almost blob where he could just react. He, he wasn't really worried. He was just sort of reacting to whatever um, Shinsumi did because he could handle it in force. Right. Mm -hmm. He just had everything available to him. Uh, just like the way I don't know if you're still on the screen, but you can see the way his army is right now in the middle of the the map. It's just chilling. Mm -hmm. You could just do that everywhere. Like he was just. He was in such a commanding position, and he, you could just tell that by the way he was just semi not trying anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> Do you know what it, I mean? But it's smart, right? So, so a yeah. couple things. Part of it's the way the map is built, yeah. right? Because you can occupy that central position and not only dominate two of the three VPs from there, but dominate your opponent's resources and then still flex to that third VP. So, if you mm, own sure. the center of the map in Toronto coastline, like you own the map, um, mm -hmm. and there's so much risk, right? Every time Shinshigami tried to push for his own fuel, uh, he really uh, ended up getting like run down on retreat, bleeding a lot of models, etc. Um, what I appreciate about Barrow Down's approach, though, is understanding the resource balance. And so, if you own both of those fuels for most of the game, um, what you know, what does your opponent have to work with? He has manpower, 
right? He doesn't have fuel, so you're not going to see Stewart's. You're not going to see Humber's. Um, you're not going to see a Matilda at the 12 minute mark. But what you're going to right. see are infantry sections, Aussies, AT guns, stuff he can get that don't have a fuel component to them. And yeah. so by building his force to deal with it, and that's why I think the Guas has made so much sense, right? They force guys out of cover with the flamethrower. You use a sight blocker, you use a smoke grenade to allow them to close. And he, I mean, he did it in that engagement where they won uh, against the three Aussie squads, right? He popped smoke. Yeah. The British infantry had to move up to get past the smoke to see them. And now you're in the max DPS range of those <laughs> wasses. And then the, the guys just start to melt. Um, yeah. And of course, the wasses can attack ground inside the smoke where you can't really attack ground the wasses while they're in the smoke, right? You're just with just normal conventional rifles. So mm -hmm. I guess he had, that, he had that going for him. It was very smart. And they get that buff anyway when they're in the smoke. Right, the Guasas, they got like a little speed bet one. buff. Or... Yeah, I bet one. They oh, I bet one. So right, they didn't yeah, have yeah. it yet, but um, I'm pretty sure after that engagement, they had that one. Um, oh, yeah, it, it absolutely did. <laughs> I think they killed like 10 guys in that engagement. They were beasts. Yeah. Um, a couple other things. Uh, so for Shin Shigumi, I, I mean, first off, hats off to staying in and continuing yeah. to contest it. Obviously, it got closed out on VPs, but by the end of the game, like you could see a route like let's say let's say vps were were not an imminent problem for him you can see a route where he starts to kind of battle back um well at least until the obj barrage comes in and annihilates two more squads in at gun yeah. But yeah. great crusader play i like the cheeky push into the base like he is doing whatever he can to stay in the game and that um that's one of the things i appreciate about the company of heroes games uh is the comeback mechanic right uh, in other games, like if you end up on the back foot within the first five minutes, you might as well quit because there's no way back in. It can be a little frustrating when you win the early game to then get thrown on the back foot, but uh, I think it makes the games more entertaining to watch. Uh, but yeah. a, a couple things that I saw that I think are interesting points, maybe maybe instructive. Uh, so some of the cheeky mines that he threw down, those are awesome if you have a plan to address it. So mm -hmm. think about the heavy mine that he put right outside uh, Barrow Down's base. And it caught the Tiger, engine destroyed crit. But every infantry unit in the DAC can repair. <laughs> and you have no, especially no mobile AT to actually exploit that. Yeah. And so yeah. it's a great idea. But if you can't, it's, it's almost a waste of munitions, right? The problem resolves itself. Does it keep the Tiger from chasing down your infantry section on retreat? Absolutely. But that's yeah. all you bought with that probably 55 munitions. So uh, it's something that you got to think about, like aggressive mines are good, but how are you going to exploit the advantage that they create? And if you can't yeah. do it, it's debatable whether or not you should place them. Yeah. And, and the most important question is, is the mine a big mine or not? I mean, <laughs> is, there, is, is there even a point in placing it if it's just a, a little mine? You know what I mean? So uh, is, I... To, to, uh, you may, mines are to, overrated. you may be able to answer this uh, and i don't know so you know how you hit a half track uh and it's got a yep. unit in it sometimes the unit gets out scot-free sometimes the unit disappears sometimes they take 50 percent casualties yeah um so there's there's a, a there's a 50 percent roll on every model inside the half track okay so is it so, um, so it's not related to which type of mine then no, no. So I, I'll give you an example. Uh, in one of my videos recently, I there's a bit where I throw a satchel charge at 250 that's doing a donut, like it's returning on itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the satchel charge kills; it just kills the the uh, the 250 outright. But the pile, even though the <clears throat> Panzer pile inside, uh, you know, you'd think it would die inside the satchel, the explosion of the satchel. They get out because they roll; they roll every single 50 and they survive. So all the models just pop out of this exploding satcheled. Um, which, which is they, hilarious because if you did yeah. the proper micro thing and hopped them out yeah. of the vehicle they would have died to the yeah. satchel they would have yeah. instantly died yeah <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of weird it was sort of like you know in the a team uh when um they're just like spraying like m60s and ak's and m60s and just no one gets shot it was kind of like that <laughs> and the the panzer pilots just jump out and they're just absolutely fine and it's like okay cool thanks yeah. game but it was, it was still cool well, when they got back to the hq they started puking their guts out from the massive concussion <laughs> but you know other than yeah. that <laughs> yeah um, well, also um just go before ahead. we go what do you think of the uh the cache placement i know they're cheaper in this doctrine but uh, do you think it was like a little bit desperate it, it absolutely was desperate but i see what he's doing it, it yeah. makes sense to me if he can protect them i'd maybe go yeah. with one and not two the other thing he yeah. could have done 
as soon as you unlock that ability is throw one on the plus 16 yeah right because um, now yeah. now you can get the scope rifles on all your aussies now like all your abilities just become that much cheaper because it goes from plus 16 to plus 24 you don't have to yeah. cap up another munitions point anywhere else on the map after that um because mm-hmm. he spent 250 D manpower on uh because he built two i think they're 125 each with this doctrine so he yeah. spent 250 um manpower on which is essentially almost a unit right yeah uh on on caches and one of them you know barely lasted the game i think yeah. it barely lasted a few minutes after it was built because he, obviously he's behind so cool. he doesn't have a, it, it, an army even close to that size to protect it yeah and and with the flamethrower buffs once the gloss does find it, <laughs> it it's yeah. it's gone it's uh, toast yeah the other piece of it Right, you think about the use of that manpower. Piecemealing AT against this DAC mechanized build is ineffective. Right. Mm. So a single two pounder is great, but all it's going to do is zone out an area of the map. If you want to kill some of those light vehicles, you need two AT guns, especially when you're running Aussies who don't have a snare. Right. Mm. Yeah. Um, it may be, you know, a, a two pounder and a Humber to challenge the 250 um i think a humber and a flak filling is more or less a heads up fight right uh so you bring a two pounder in um or you bring some infantry to distract the flak filling maybe that works uh humber is more fuel than it used to be but but there's still some value there but maybe even like having the humber on the field means that that instead of assault grenadiers now it's panzer jaegers right and so it's just a little bit more space for your aussies to operate um yeah, I I think if you're playing if you're playing against the DAC, multiple AT guns kept just a little bit apart. Um, he there's maybe some value to suppression dealing with all the DAC infantry. Although Barrow Down's micro is solid, so you know you're just going to immediately see a smoke grenade from the glosses and the assault grenades, and they're going to bounce away. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I actually think uh, I think I would actually go Stuart. I go Stuart Command Stuart. Mm-hmm. Um, Stuart to fend off things like the flak and the the two fifties from my infantry, but also the command buff to make all my Aussies um, shoot faster, shoot better, uh, be more accurate. You know, uh, when they help win the engagements, try, try and because I think it, at that point, you know, he didn't really have any hard hard AT apart from um, yeah, he didn't really have any hard hard AT at all. Yeah, the Dak yeah, player, yeah, I think that that would have been the way to go. A uh, command Stuart for me, I think. Yeah, and that, that's smart. So now you're fighting the DAC combined arms bonus with yeah. your own combined arms bonus, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. In in this case, without the fuel, the steward is a little bit of a push. 75 fuel to get your first steward out, right? Between yeah, the tech. I suppose. But, yeah. but you get a couple, um, and then again, maybe you stall for the archer, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah, you go, that's, that's maybe you go three or four stewards with your Aussie infantry to counter the team weapons, because like the Aussie crack shot ability on uh, a pack 38 is just going to melt yep. that thing. Keep your stewards sure. alive, over repair them. And now you start to to pick away at the glossatory, the assault grid of the ears, get the manpower bleed. Like y- you can see how that might work. The yeah. And now you're also more mechanized, more mobile, and you don't have to worry as much about the wonky retreat paths. Um, yeah, I... I I can I can see that working out. It's just it's a shame, right? That one bad engagement yeah. um, <laughs> where you lose three squads like that. That's a lot of uh, manpower and resources and veterancy down the drain, right? Um, and that probably turned it there. I I get uh, Shin Shigumi's point at the end about the luck. It really did seem like every time there was a a unit getting away with a sliver of health, uh, it was Barrow Downs. <laughs> Um, yeah. that's obviously the boost that he gets from having a high elo, right? As your elo goes up, your units get better and better RNG, um, relic, <laughs> please fix. No, uh, just to be clear, that's, that's a joke. As far as I know, that's not an actual thing. Um, it just feels like it. I, I do want to, to highlight though, uh, Barrow Downs, the, the micro having seven different unit types on the field and having, it seemed everyone in the right place at the right time. Uh, well done. Um, we went over the build order before this, but very balanced approach gives him a lot of flexibility to adjust to whatever the opponent's doing right so if stewards or a humber do come out he can build a pack 38 he can get panzer jaegers uh if they play aussies and he's got to lean into the infantry he's got the assault grenadiers he's got the glossatory and then if he, he doesn't have to commit either way he can always choose armored support get that loiter 
get the vehicle pen buffs or the coax machine gun buffs. So um, I like the way Baradon's plays Dak. I think if you're looking uh, for not just a build order, but technique for how to play the Dak combined arms game, I think this is a good one to watch. Um, Kamo, I'll let you close this one out. What do you got? Um, yeah, no, I think we've covered everything. The only thing I'll say is, uh, Relic, if you're watching, please give the Brits a big mind. I think that'd be so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know why they don't have one. It's pretty weird if you ask me. Give them one, please. They thank should you, thank you. probably buy one on Lend Lease from the Americans, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, I'll take anything. I, even if, like, I don't know, like the um, the little half track, I can't remember what it's called, sorry. You know, the thing that gets converted to the Polston. Even if that could lay a mind of that one or something. That'd oh, be the 15 CWT. Okay. Yeah, yeah, something like that, like a little utility vehicle, give it a bit more purpose, you know. That would be super cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully they're hopefully they're watching, listening. Thank you. Mirage. <laughs> Mirage flow. That's for you. Okay. Hey, <laughs> thanks, man. This is a lot of fun. Appreciate it. No trouble. Yeah. All right. That's all for us guys, and we'll see you all in the next one.